How and why did Banjo 3 transform from a straight sequel into nuts and bolts? Uh, yeah, pretty much because I'd got bored doing this, the previous formula. Uh, we'd done, uh, obviously, the first game, and then the second game was <clears throat> more of the same, but kind of bigger and, uh, and, and cleverer. I, I just didn't feel I had anywhere left to go by doing a third one that was exactly the same. So, so we started exploring different, what could we do differently for a third game that maybe would take people by surprise, kind of um, sh shake the genre up a bit. Um, and the first, the first idea was to actually do a remake of Banjo 1, um, but then change the gameplay. So, so when you started the game, it made it look like it was exactly the same game with better graphics, but then the more you played, we'd actually change things that happened in the level. So in the first level with Mumbo's Mountain, the, um, the mountain was going to break open, there was going to be this massive termite that came out the top. So, so players that would have played it before, it was like, it's the same game, but it's different. Um, but um, I think, ultimately, we were concerned that it would just be seen as a remake, even if it was clever. So, so then, we, then we started dabbling with an idea where it was like a more traditional banjo game, but the player played at the same time as, as Grunty, and Grunty was AI, and she'd be running around the levels trying to collect the jigsaw at the same time. So it was like a, it was almost a battle between um, you playing banjo and then Grunty as AI playing a traditional banjo game. But um, we kind of turned that one down because of the problems with AI. We, we didn't think we could make AI, AI that good enough to, to warrant the game. So, so kind of third time lucky uh, was, was kind of looking at all platform games, like when, when you get to do the puzzles and the, and the fun bits, as I, as I call them, they were really cool. Um, but the bits in between were quite boring. There's like lots of walking around on levels. Um, I think I called it the traveling. So I looked for a way to try and make the traveling fun um, and kind of hit upon the idea that rather than the character walking, what about if he, if he rode? Um, so, so to try and make the traveling fun, but then I wanted players to decide how they were going to travel, hence the creation of vehicles. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of where it came from. Um, and I, I, I still love the game. Um, I know it didn't um, do that well, and I know there's a lot of banjo purists out there that didn't, probably wasn't their, their kind of first choice, but I think it was a very ambitious project, and, and that the editor we wrote to put the vehicles together was probably one of the best pieces of software I've ever seen written at Rare. Um, and I think the game's still fun, and I think when Rocket League came out a few years ago, I thought, hmm, that's actually Banjo Nuts and Bolts. Um, <laughs> we were, we were kind of ahead of our time, but maybe didn't quite package it right. Right, well, with that, uh, thank you very much for...